Good evening Oswego and welcome to WTOP 10 Sunday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Adam Rupsick. And I'm Kathy Roller. Today is Sunday, November 20th and this is your new sports and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. Some breaking bad news in Oswego according to the Palladian Times. Oswego City Police are investigating a mobile meth lab in the Lowe's Plaza in Oswego. According to an employee of a business located in Widewater Commons, police ordered businesses in the plaza to shut down while officers investigate a suspicious vehicle believed to contain equipment and chemicals involved in the production of methamphetamine. For more information, check with tomorrow's edition of the Palladian Times. Ten people were killed in a confrontation between protesters and security forces in Egypt. Spokesman Dr. Adil Adawi says these fatalities are relating to two shootings on Saturday. According to Adil Adawi, over 1,100 people have died this weekend. The majority of the unrest has occurred in Tahrir Square. The activists are protesting against a plan for a constitution that will shield the military from public oversight. Hundreds of Egyptian army and security forces clear the protesters by using tear gas. Security forces were also seen beating and arresting the protesters. A pretty good weekend in Oswego weather-wise. We'll take a quick look outside with meteorologist Ryan Farrell. My clear so, this happens, stand over there. Okay, go. What? Okay. We don't need you up there. Right now, go, go. In Oswego, I think we all just Ryan Farrell. Outside of Center Center, we currently have a temperature of 43 degrees, point of 39. So we do have a north wind at 9 miles per hour. As we don't get on regional radar, there's a lot of activity off to the south of us, but that shouldn't be hitting us all the night. And as we go on for the next three days, as you can see, we're going to have another storm maker coming in Tuesday night into Wednesday, and we'll be giving us a wintry mix. More about that in my full forecast, but for now, back to the desk. Thanks, Ryan. A Monday deadline moves for congressional members to do a super committee to come up with a plan to cut $1.2 trillion over 10 years. But that's not looking likely. Democratic and Republican aides are now saying that an announcement of no deal is the most probable scenario. Barbara Hall has more. The clock is ticking as the Deficit Reduction Super Committee struggles to strike a deal on $1.2 trillion in budget cuts. The first deal deadline is Monday, but the committee has until Wednesday to vote. Both Republican and Democratic aides say no final decision has been made, and it's looking like there won't be one. The hope was that uh, even at this late date, you could take things that had been scored and put them, put them together. I think that's pretty doubtful at this point, but uh, obviously nobody wants to quit until the stroke of midnight. Monday's deadline could bring an announcement that negotiations have ended. Uh, we are painfully, painfully aware of the deadline that is staring us in the face. Uh, we have 12 good people uh, who have worked hard since this committee has been created uh, to try to find sufficient common ground. If the committee fails to find common ground, there will be automatic across-the-board spending cuts starting in 2013. But some members are still hopeful that won't happen. I'm going to be waiting all day. I'll be at the table, as I've been, willing to talk to any Republican who says, look, my country is more important than this. That pile of bills is not going to go away. Some politicians have other ideas. Clock's ticking, no progress, you're in the dark. I mean, to the do-nothing option, it gets us uh, $6 trillion of savings. This place is good at doing nothing. That may be the best option. I'm Barbara Hall reporting. Libyans celebrated late into the evening Saturday on the reported capture of Gaddafi's son, Salif al-Islam. 
He was captured in a desert gun battle after an 18-day stakeout. Gaddafi's son was caught by revolutionary fighters. Al-Islam, wanted by the International Criminal, Co Criminal Court, has been targeted since Gaddafi's death. Officials believe he was trying to flee to neighboring country Niger. Libya plans on putting him to trial. Cell phone carriers in Pakistan will ban obscene words from text messages. The Pakistan Telecommunication Authority distributed a notice to three cell phone providers this week. According to officials, banning these words are part of an effort to cut down spam messages. The PTA banned thousands of websites containing pornographic messages last month. A good weekend for Oswego Hockey. Ross Bentley has a quick look at your sports. Thanks, Adam. The second-ranked Oswego State men's hockey team looked to remain unbeaten in SUNYAC play as they took on Buffalo State in Buffalo this Saturday. Buffalo State's Justin Knee gave the Bengals a 3-2 lead just over a minute into the third period, but the Lakers would fight back to even the score at three after Paul Rodriguez notched his second goal of the game and Tim Carr scored more moments later to give the Lakers a 4-3 lead. Kyle Batum added an empty netter to finish off the Bengals and give Oswego a hard-earned 5-3 victory. Oswego State will continue their SUNYAC schedule when they take on Plattsburgh and Potsdam on the road December 2nd and December 3rd. We'll be back later with more sports, but for now, back to the desk. The search continues for three new superintendents in Oswego County School District. Ten applicants were received from people who want to be Oswego County BOCES superintendents. The BOCES board will review the credentials of the applicants and survey the results for what they want to see as their new superintendent. The board then will decide how many to invite to their interviews. The group will conduct those interviews and narrow down the field to a few finalists. The New York State Canal System from Oswego to Albany opens today. Syracuse.com reports that the New York State Canal System closed in late August from Lock 17 in Herkimer County to Lock 9 in Schenectady County. Canadians Dave and Pat Bowman have been stuck in central New York for almost four weeks due to the closing. The canal opened at 7 this morning to let boats continue on their way. We'll take a quick break. There's a large area of rain off to the south of the state. Will that be affecting us? Stay tuned to find out. News Canales Week is sponsored by Canales Restaurant, located at 156 West Utica Street. Dine in, take out, or delivery on and off campus. 315-343-3540 or online at canalesrestaurant.com. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. SUNY Oswego will host 2012 Microenterprise Training Classes. Classes begin January 21st at 118 Rich Hall on SUNY Oswego campus. The class will run from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. each Saturday through February 18th. 
The program provides 24-hour small business training programs covering topics such as how to write a business plan, how to obtain financing and accounting tax issues. Also, marketing and other basic business startup issues are involved in the class. SUNY Oswego launches a new mobile website. This will help keep up with the increasing demand from those accessing the Oswego website from mobile phones and tablets. The new website allows users to connect with the campus through a location-based map, interactive directory, as well as many other features. The project was created by web support specialist Rick Buck, Campus Technology Services, and the Office of Public Affairs. For more information about the mobile site, check out yesterday's story in the Paul Times. Gaudy Christmas sweaters are unusually regarded as a fashion fox. But some retailers say the unique eye-catching threads are making a comeback. Stacia Matthews reports. Ugly Christmas sweaters have gained new respect. The one-time darlings of your grandmother's closet became a party trend on college campuses a few years ago. Now they're all the rave at holiday parties. And I'm really into not only the stuff in the front, but I want a little bit of stuff in the back, too. The gaudier, the better. The gaudier, the better. Pam Windler drove from Lafayette to Broad Ripple Vintage to find a sweater. We ask our guest to uh, wear their best holiday sweater and for the men to wear their best sweater vest or tie. Fellas get in these Santa sweaters. They're really probably a plus size ladies, but they look hysterical. Store owner Stephanie Cater. Well, they're just cheery little numbers, you know? They've got bells and bows, and sometimes they uh, have Santa uh, with the puppy dogs or kitty cats. <laughs> they're just, they put you in a happy mood. What's on the rack now won't be for long. This time of year, we just run them in as fast as we get them. So, you can't find a sweater you like? How about one of these? Check this dress out and look at the buttons. So where does Cater find these gaudy by design fashions? Well, she scours thrift shops, especially charity stores, for the hidden treasures. And the money we spend goes right back in to the charitable organization, so it's really a beautiful thing. Pam found a beauty. And look at this, these lights, and check this out. Santa even has a place to plug them in. Is that not cool? That is great. Yep, this is the one. So Adam, are you gonna get your cheesy sweater this year? Already got it, Kathy. Now let's take a look at your weather with meteorologist Ryan Farrell. If you missed our current conditions before, here they are. We have a temperature of 43 degrees, dew point of 35, but we do have a north wind at 9 miles per hour. As we take a look at our almanac today, we had a very nice day today, well above average. We had a high of 59 degrees where our average was 45. Our low was actually our average high today, so that was a very nice bonus for us. Precipitation zero today. Look at the sunset, 437, as early as it's been all year long. Now, as we take a look at our statewide temperatures, the hot spot as always, New York City, 58. As we head up the Hudson, Albany, 55. Glens Falls, 52. Plattsburgh, our rivals to the north, 43. Our cold spot today, Watertown, 40 degrees. Now, as we take a look at our IntelliCast surface map, we have a cold front moving through our area, so that nice high temperature we had today, it will not be the same tomorrow. But building in behind that high pressure, so that should be clearing us out over the next couple days. Take a look at our regional radar. There's a lot of activity off to the south, but that should be missing us, staying clear to the south of us for tonight, so don't worry about any rain. Now, as we take a look at our future cast, 1 a.m. tonight, tomorrow morning, I'm sorry. Again, that rain off to the south. A couple high clouds in our area, but that will be clearing out. 10 a.m. on Monday. Same thing, the rain below us should be um, dissipating. As we go into 7 p.m. Monday, no clouds, bright sun for tomorrow, so that will be nice. As we take a look at our forecast for tonight, we're going to have a low temperature of 28 degrees. Very cold tonight. Partly cloudy, a couple clouds moving through, so we will be definitely getting very cold. North winds at 11 to 14 miles per hour. As we look at Monday's forecast, again, as I said, that cold front moving through, 39 degrees tomorrow, but very sunny, so that will be nice. Going on to Monday night, temperature of 34 degrees, 
mostly cloudy, calm, a very nice night. As we take a look at our extended forecast, Tuesday going into Wednesday, we'll be having another system come in that might be giving us a wintry mix. But as we go ahead into the weekend, sunny conditions, high temperatures, looks like it's going to be very nice for Thanksgiving weekend. Thank you, Ryan. I'm really looking forward to that. We're all on break, so it'll be nice Absolutely. to have some Definitely good Absolutely. Definitely get outside, maybe play some Thanksgiving football. Who knows? <laughs> and when we come back, we'll check out some popular web videos. But first, here's a look at your late night menu. And ends Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. Oswego MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. 10 News Canales Week is sponsored by Canales Restaurant, located at 156 West Utica Street. Dine in, take out, or delivery on and off campus. 315-343-3540 or online at canalesrestaurant.com. Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP 10. Like the number. I'm lucky. I get to do something I love. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. And now, Christy Summers. Thanks, Kathy. This week, we're going to take a look at some most funny videos I've seen in upcoming videos that I've most recently found for your entertainment. Let's take a look. favorite videos I've discovered for this week. To start off, we have a girl named Miranda who truly thinks that she has a talent for singing. However, I'll let you guys decide that for yourselves. Let's take a look. You know that I love you, boy. Hot like Mexico. Rejoice at this point. I got to choose nothing to lose. Don't call my name. Don't call my name. Alejandro. I'm not your babe. I'm not your babe. Fernando. Don't want to kiss, don't want to touch, just smoke a cigarette to hush. Don't call my name, don't call my name, Roberto. I mean, if anything, the girls got some sweet moves. Not everyone can pull off the O dance. Anyways, for our next video, we have a man that can really get under your skin. Why don't you go ahead and just look at it? When I see a car like this, first thing I do is I say, would you look at this? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah, there's a few more blemishes on the car. The oh, car, my gosh. Just car, look at the it. The car is not perfect. Just look at it. <laughs> just look at it. Yeah, well. What the heck is that? <laughs> I think one of the main reasons I wouldn't sell that car to that guy is because of his creepy white pants and his creepy white shoes. There's got to be something wrong there. Last but not least, this video is awesome because it's right in a dorm room, and I've been thinking of setting up something similar in mine. I think we can all see where this is going. Wait, does that guy have peanut butter? Yeah, he definitely does. Let's fast forward. Stop. This kid is literally burning on a desk. That's so impressive. You been like burning. What you thinking? I'm thinking about freaking. And what you wouldn't expect at the end. We're gonna try it all the way to put and turn and think about the And there you have it. This week's top funniest videos. I'm Christy Summers. Well, thank you, Christy, and that just proves that anyone can be famous <laughs> from YouTube. That's when you know. <laughs>
U.S. Senator Charles Schumer is vowing to stop a bill allowing telemarketers to call personal cell phones. The Mobile Information Call Act put forth by the House of Representatives allows companies to make sales calls to individual mobile phones. Schumer is against the bill, saying it opposes the Telephone Consumer Protection Act passed in 1991. Schumer said, quote, For 20 years, consumers have been protected from receiving auto-generated messages on their phones. But this would totally take those predictions out of sort. State police made the largest number of arrests at Occupy Albany this Saturday. Approximately 75 protesters were in the park at 1030 at night. Twelve state troopers arrived at the park five minutes before the curfew and issued a warning notifying protesters that arrests will be made if they were to refuse to leave. After a second warning at 11.05, protesters dispersed throughout the park. 48 protesters were arrested shortly after. 24 people were arrested on November 12th after refusing to leave the park before the curfew. At least 11 of the protesters arrested this weekend were previously arrested for breaking the curfew. The city of Albany has declined to arrest protesters who remain in the neighboring Academy Park. However, the state will make arrests in Lafayette Park. Well, Ross, more dreams were crushed in Buffalo today. Ross Bentley tells us more. Five and four Buffalo Bills tried to break their losing streak today as they traveled to Miami to take on the Dolphins. We pick it up here in the first quarter with the Dolphins up 7-3 when Reggie Bush takes the handoff up the middle and goes in for the score. As you can see it right there, Bush taking the handoff, Miami up 14-3. We move on to the second quarter, Matt Moore drops back with the play action pass and he finds Charles Clay in the end zone for the 12-yard touchdown. Moore had three touchdown passes in the game. Under two minutes to go in the half now, Moore hooks up with Devon Bess over the middle for the score for his third touchdown pass, and the Dolphins stun the Bills by a final score of 35-8. to After picking up a nail-biting victory over Ithaca on Friday night, the 18th-ranked Oswego State men's basketball squad had their hands full again on Saturday as they faced off against Wells College in a rematch of last year's first round of the NCAA tournament. After Oswego State had the lead for most of the second half, Wells stunned the Lakers by notching back-to-back three-pointers with the game in the game with just 30 seconds remaining. Oswego State, however, would have the last possession and Lakers senior point guard Sean Michael knocked down a buzzer-beating three-pointer to give Oswego the victory. With the shot, Michael moved the Lakers to 2-1 and one on the season and made them co-champions of the Maxfield Tournament. Oswego State's next game will be Tuesday night as they host Gobleskill. The fifth-ranked Syracuse Orange hosted Colgate this Saturday in their first game since accusations about a sexual assault have surfaced regarding assistant coach Bernie Fine. We pick it up in the first half with Syracuse up 24-13, to and Scoop Jardine finds James Sutherland for the three Sutherland-led the Syracuse Orange with 14 points. Second half now, Syracuse up big. Jardine gets the steal, gives it ahead to Brandon Trish for the jam, and Syracuse runs away with this one in a route by final score, 92 to 47. And that's it for sports, and now back over to the news desk. Thanks, Ross, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the lighter side of news. But first, let's take a look at your community calendar. MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. 10 News Canales Week is sponsored by Canales Restaurant, located at 156 West Utica Street. Dine-in, take-out, or delivery on and off campus. 
315-343-3540 or online at canalisrestaurant.com. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Drink from the tap. A $3 bottle of water a day times 10 years times 6% interest is over 14,000 grams. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. And now we'll take a live into the lighter side of news. This next story proves that there's never too old to learn new things. A 98-year-old man in Connecticut is out with his first book and just a couple years ago finished learning how to read and write. Jim Altman reports. Nervous? Or what's, what's, what does it mean? What's happening? <laughs> the story isn't that Jim Henry is 98. 98 going on 99. <laughs> the story is that he was illiterate until he was 96. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. Now meet Jim Henry, the author. This is his book, In a Fisherman's Language. Thanks for coming out. The lifelong lobsterman kept his secret until he moved here to Academy Point, a senior home in Mystic. As time went on and he lived here, he started talking about that he couldn't read, he, he couldn't write, and he opened up more and more to the residents. So that's when it all came out and he took the initiative and wanted to learn to read and write. Started reading, um, initiated everything at 96. By 97 was doing more and more and then wrote the full blown book at 98. Set in the Mystic and Stonington area in a fisherman's language is 29 chapters and pretty much covers all of Jim's 98 years. My whole life, ever since I was a boy, I was 40 some years captain of three boats. And for 96 years, Jim couldn't sign his name. Today, he's signing his books. He's an author, <laughs> and one that seems to be touching hundreds of people really fast. I tell you, I'm in the cloud. I can't believe it. It's almost impossible to believe the way I feel. I'm the happiest man in the world. Lakes have been discovered on Jupiter's moon Europa. A new NASA discovery reveals the lakes from the breakthrough of the icy surface on Jupiter's moon. NASA has been working on this discovery for more than 10 years. On Wednesday, NASA released a computer simulation of what Europa's Great Lakes might look like. Dozens of adoptions became official in Baltimore Saturday. They took place at the city's circuit court as part of the 10th annual National Adoption Day, which takes place on the Saturday before Thanksgiving each year. Organizers say adoptions have been finalized for more than 35,000 children nationwide on National Adoption Day since it started in 2000. Actress Myla Kunis is going to have a pretty memorable weekend. The 28-year-old has just been named GQ's magazine Knockout of the Year. And Friday, she's hanging out at the Marine Corps Ball in North Carolina. You might remember Sergeant Scott Moore asked her to go to the dance with him over the last summer. And she said yes. Her Friends with Benefits co-star Justin Timberlake also accepted a date from a female Marine, and the ball was held a few days ago. Now we'll take a look at your class day forecast. Ryan, what do you got? All right, thanks, Adam. Well, as we look at our forecast for tomorrow, it's going to be a very chilly day. We're going to start off with a temperature of 30 degrees, and we're only going to get up to 39. So make sure everyone bundles up tomorrow. Definitely get those hats and mittens out. I know I am. <laughs> okay, and that will do it for us here at the WTOP 10 News Team. For the 10 News Team, I'm Ross Bentley. I'm Ryan Farrell. I'm Adam Rupsick. And I'm Kathy Roller. Stay classy, Oswego. Thank you.